not hand it to us on a plate. It looks like scout flies scout are always in red boxes. Thank you for that, Daxter. He's going to annoy the living crap out of you with little bits of advice that you don't actually need throughout your entire playthrough. Um, I don't think he'd do that if I turn the helpful hints off, but... Oh, well. well uh, hello there, my dear boy. You've caught me at a most inopportune moment. Uh, I wish to set off on my journey yesterday, but I seem to be a spot short on the old precursor orbs. I would have pledged my word that I had 90 of them, but I gather that your young friend, you know, the little annoying, miserably ugly one, might have just pilfered them as a sort of a spot of fun. That's a really nice anyway, way to say Anyway, uh, would stealing. you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway? I would offer you a power cell in return. That pretty much sets the stage for most interactions you're going to have with um, people in villages. Uh, they're pretty much going to say, I want 90 power precursor orbs and I'm going to give you a power cell in return. Uh, again, it all comes down to power cells. Uh, there are some other things that you can do to, uh, to get a power cell out of these guys. For example... Oh, don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boys? See them? See how they're not moving? That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. And boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, and, and another thing, if by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is, a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. Naturally. I don't know what it is with the number 90. You'd think they'd want a flat 100, but, you know, that's what they want. What we're gonna get them. Now, the game does try to lead you to going into Sentinel Beach first. That's the area over in that direction. Um, it's not actually the most efficient way to go because there are things that you need to do in uh, the jungle area over here before you can collect all the power cells in Sentinel Beach. So if you do if you are going full speed or you have already played the game thoroughly, you don't really you know, you're just doing it for fun, you don't want that whole oh I'm a new let's explain the game to um, scenario. The center of the uh, sorry Sentinel Beach is supposed to be again more of an introduction, similar to guys at rock but a little more free roaming. Um, whereas Forbidden Jungle is a little more you know, it's got a couple more challenges to it. Um, so if you're playing the game for the second time through, I wouldn't bother going to Sandover Village. Gotta, gotta stop saying that. Sentinel Beach. Alliteration, gotta love it. Um, so I wouldn't recommend going to Sentinel Beach first. Now, I'm guessing most of you haven't actually played this game before, so we're still gonna go to Sentinel Beach first. That's another thing, Blue Echo will um, open up uh, Scout Fly boxes for you as well, saves you a bit of time. That's pretty much the whole thing. Save a new time. What it will not do, even if I've gotten there in time, which I'm not sure I can, is open up these steel boxes for you. Explosion is hardly the only way to do it. There's some nasty bastard all the way out there uh, throwing bombs at me, but that's going to be quite useful for explosion. For those of you who aren't perfectionists, you don't really need to collect every single wall in the game. Not even to collect all of the um, power cells. I'm probably going to do it just as I go along my force of habit, but um, yeah, you really don't need to get all of the precursor orbs to beat the game or even get the 100% completion levels, which is interesting. Anyway, there are better ways to exploit these boxes and we'll show you that a bit later on. Oh, something else.
else I haven't mentioned, and I've already started doing it. Um, long jumps, the best way to get around. Um, basically, you've got your roll, that's L1, or R1 in this game. Man. But you follow up with your jump mid roll, and he'll do a long jump. Hey, that pelican just snagged a power cell! Let's go kick some big bird butt! That one's actually something a lot of new players have troubles with getting this particular house, so I don't know. But yeah, that long jump, really crucial if you're going to try and save yourself some time, and it's not actually going to come up too often in the game where you have to use it in order to do something where there's no other options, but you're going to be using it all game through, nevertheless. Quick! We have to get to the power cell before the pelican scoops it up again! Quicker than the bird. Oh, I don't know who's getting this one every time. L1 is basically your extreme button. It makes things happen on a grander scale. So jumping forward, jumping up, hopping. Hopping is going to come into an effect of like. More precursor. Oh, what? Get it down. So you can see Sentinel Beach has just handed me a couple of free power cells. Relatively little challenge. As I say, this is supposed to be the first area after Guys of Rock. I'm not going to go too far into it now, just because it's not too it's not very efficient to do Sentinel Beach first. One thing I do love about this game, and it's one of the first games I saw it um, introduced in, uh, obviously aside from the exceptional example of Ocarina of Time, or Zelda, um, it's got a day and night cycle. It doesn't change anything practical about the game. Um, no monsters spawn that they will at night as opposed to day, but it does add a lot of um, a lot of flavour to explore in different areas. They look, uh, some areas look quite a bit nicer at night, some areas look quite a bit nicer in the day sometimes. It's just a nice change of flavour. So here is an example of one of the things that we're not really going to be able to do until we've got out. I don't know. What a weird looking thing! I bet we can get this open if you power up with that zappy blue eco stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We scrounged enough orbs to trade for a power cell. They don't serve any Let's other get back and make the switch game, already. If you get some orbs, it's usually He'll ask me to do this if I um, speak to him, but that's just going to take up time that I particularly want to spend. Basically, you're gonna ask me if we heard up his yak cows. How about that for a name? The yaks, the cows, the yak cows. The guys that made this game, very creative. So creative, I don't even know how to. Just amazing. I wonder if I can do two at once. I've never even tried that. I'm just gonna waste my time trying. This, I think, was probably put in the game as just a coordination training uh, exercise for you, just to get the hang of um, moving around with Jack and keeping camera control as well. Camera is relatively important for keeping an eye on these guys. They'll always just you know, walk in a direction that puts them. Where you are, right? so it's pretty easy to control them. Just walk in an arc around them if you want them to turn. Not very challenging, but as I say, we can practice. <laughs> 